Following the release of Godzilla vs Kong, we now have four movies in the MonsterVerse franchise. And as you know, when there is a new release within a franchise, I like to do a ranking. So today, we are going to be ranking the MonsterVerse movies from the worst to the best. But just quickly before we actually get into the ranking, let me know in the comments what your ranking would be of these movies. And if you could like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate that. But anyways, let's get into it. Coming in at fourth and last place is Godzilla King of the Monsters. This movie is big, there's no doubt about that. The action is big, the titans are big, they bring in loads and loads of titans and even when they do have the action it is brilliant. However, a big problem here is the movie takes itself way too seriously and in doing so it has all these human characters and they try and develop a plot with them which we just simply don't care about and it's a very weak part of this universe. You know, there were some great Godzilla and King Ghidorah moments, but they were, the movie overall was just weighed down by these human characters because some of the choices they made are just absolutely ridiculous and you'd expect ridiculousness from this movie but you wouldn't expect it from easy things like the human characters that they could avoid. And that also kind of weaves into how dumb the villain's plot actually is and just some of the decisions mixed in with that. I won't go into too much detail. Some of the things they just say with a straight face, it really had me laughing because this movie is ridiculous, but it doesn't acknowledge that at all. It takes itself way too seriously. The human characters are poor, but there is a lot of fun to be had here with the action as it always delivers in these movies. But it is an underwhelming movie, especially for how many titans are involved with the movie by the end. This was a hard one, but coming in at third place is Kong Skull Island. There is a lot of action here and it is all there to be seen. It's in the daylight. It's uncut and we just get some unique things that we have not seen in a movie like this before. The previous entry in this franchise it had complaints about the lack of action and or the lack of visibility with it. Here it's as I said right in the middle of the day you know in the open so there's no excuses this time they absolutely deliver on that front and as we do get to see a lot of the action we get to see a lot of Kong and the CGI for him is phenomenal, especially for the amount of screen time he does get and the amount of different things which would be hard to computer generate. A thing which stands out massively in this movie for me is the environment it takes place in. It's very colorful and lively. It does make for some beautiful visuals, especially when they're fighting with, you know, a nice sunset in the background. But also in this movie, the human characters are a big weakness. I'll give it to them, they do try to make them have more of a personality, more of a character, but it's not really likeable, and some, a lot of the things they do are so dumb. And just because they do those sort of things, you can't really care about them, even though they're expecting you to. But when they are expecting you to care about a character and they develop them a little bit, they just randomly kill them off, which feels really weird. And even when that happens, it was just shrugged off, like, 30 seconds later, I like, didn't impact their lives at all. And the villain subplot with Samuel L. Jackson, it's very crazy and over the top, but it doesn't ruin the movie overall because it, I had a great time watching this as we did get to see some really cool action with Kong and the other titans that inhabited Skull Island. Maybe to many people's shock, but coming in at second place is Godzilla 2014. Now, I know this this movie got a lot of hate, especially when it came out. They said, you know, all of Godzilla, whenever he was about to come on screen, it was either in the dark or it cuts away to something else. I can understand that for me, that built the excitement and tension for the final battle when he is on screen, because once he did show up, it did not disappoint and it is one of those things where it had your jaw dropped especially when like 11 year old me saw it in cinema for the first time i was you know very very impressed and i loved it i've criticized the human characters in this franchise they're probably in their prime here you know they they are involved and they do have interesting things and you can see that they have something about them although they're not perfect they don't take up too much of the time or too much where it's 
a bother for me, mainly because I really like the cast. The design itself for Godzilla was fantastic as well, but like I said, it was going to be kind of hard to mess up when most of the action was done in the dark, so I would have enjoyed more Godzilla action, but I was satisfied with the payoff towards the end, and it's safe to say that I enjoyed this movie a lot more than a lot of people did, so that's why it narrowly came in ahead of Kong Skull Island. But coming in at first place is Godzilla vs Kong. I was very hyped for this movie, it was one of my most anticipated of this year. It was hard dealing with all the delays as well, especially with something as big as this. I mentioned in my review this was some of the best CGI I've ever seen in a movie. Well, in a movie which uses loads of CGI, it was all very consistent and the amount of detail, it, it really did impress me. I guess they did have a lot of time on their hands with all the delays, but it really, really elevated this movie. And as well, the action, we got to see things from these two titans that we've never seen in combat before. Them sharing the screen together for the first time since I think it was the 60s. It was just very, very cool and very much needed, I'd say. I've mentioned plenty of times in this video already that the human characters are a weakness of this franchise. Here, unlike Godzilla King of the Monsters, they don't really take themselves too seriously. They, you know, have the human characters do what is necessary for the plot and then they just push them to the side and let the two titans fight it out. It is one of those movies where there are a lot of plot holes and lapses in logic but you don't focus on them, you're you know, really engaged with this titan action and if you are someone who is bothered by those lapses in logic then maybe it wasn't the right film for you because yes there are so many dumb reasons for why people are in certain places at a time and the villain's plotline is ridiculous as well but you go into this movie expecting Godzilla vs Kong and you do get Godzilla vs Kong which gave me the most satisfying movie in this whole franchise. So that was my ranking of the MonsterVerse movies. Like I said before, please let me know what your ranking would be down below in the comments. I'm quickly going to go over my ratings for each movie so you can kind of see how far apart they were in the ranking and if it was close. So in fourth place I had Godzilla King of the Monsters which I gave a 64% to. In third place was Kong Skull Island with a 70%. Very narrowly above it was Godzilla 2014 with 71% in second place. But then in first place was the newly released Godzilla vs Kong with a 74%. Overall even though they, this franchise does have many problems with some of its movies, just all the action makes up for those and it is overall quite a satisfying franchise which does promise its name MonsterVerse. You will definitely be entertained watching them so even though there are some frustrating things you'll still have a good time with any of these movies. <laughs>